Hello. Um, so today I want to share with you a case that is my own case that we're going to be doing. A patient is, as you see, it is missing tooth number 30, uh, but we're actually going to be doing what what's called a delayed immediate placement on this one. And here you can see, let me see if I can get this to show up big. Uh, here you can see that um, uh, what I wanted to point out to you is we took out the tooth and uh, we had a sig pretty significant infection right in here um, and right there. And there was quite a bit of soft bone and some granulation tissue that we removed that day. Uh, and a little bit of that made me uncomfortable in terms of placing the implant as an immediate placement. Uh, so what I wanted to do was give the body six to eight weeks, uh, sorry, six weeks or so uh, for the soft tissue to close in, for the body to self get rid of uh, much of the granulation tissue. Uh, that we had there, and um, here is where we stand. Uh, I close that out. So let me uh, open that back up. <clears throat> so here's where we stand as of, uh, 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 by, I think, about 10 days ago. Uh, which is approximately five, six weeks after a uh, tooth removal. And now we're going to go ahead and plan out for the delayed immediate placement. Uh, so certainly the bone has not uh, filled in completely here. And so we have to decide whether or not immediate placement is truly an option at this point. Uh, you know, I don't pr promise my patient that immediate placement is an option, but we do take a look at it. And uh, so, um, <clears throat> uh, so we want to check for stability. The reason we did the delay placement is because of the infection, giving the body time to get rid of that. And now we're ready to go back in. Uh, so to do that, the first step I will always do is go ahead and open up my CAD CAM and bring my CEREC data in. If you notice, when I open CAD CAM tab, I can't actually click the button to import. That's because my license is not active. So right in here, you want to make sure that you have your license activated. So I'll go ahead and click my license on. Uh, go ahead and open. We browse to where our SSI file is. And now we're going to go ahead and import our SSI data. And here you can see we captured uh, three quarters of an arch is what's the size I like to capture for my surgical guide so that we can have maximum stability. And we'll go ahead and import uh, our CEREC data in and have the software automatically register that. And um, uh, you'll see what that looks like here. Pretty quickly done. Um, and now we can verify that the registration is accurate. And now we should be able to see our proposed restored tooth uh, in this area, what that's going to look like. From there, I'll simply click the Insert Implant button, and we'll plan out an implant here. So in this particular case, uh, let's say we're planning out a BioHorizons tapered laser lock implant. Uh, so I would probably try to do a 5.8 by 10.5 implant here. Uh, it would look something like this, and click OK. And then it automatically drops the implant in. And then I move to the implant align view. And now I start going through uh, what we teach at the initial training and through my trainings, which is our implant planning checklist to go ahead and try to get this implant in the optimal spot to best support our teeth, which will kind of look somewhat like this. And uh, here we can see we have our implant well placed to support our restoration to allow proper running room or um, emergence here. And, um, and also taking into consideration what is very likely to happen to our bone contour here because there's our current crest on the buckle and on the lingual. So we'll probably have a ridge that heals somewhat like this. So I do want to get my implant uh, that deep at least. That will also allow me to have proper emergence right through here to do something along those lines there. So um, you know now we can take a peek and decide is immediate placement going to work? And part of that decision process is engagement. And so right now um, I am engaging only in this bone right here. So let's outline the area where bone does not exist. Would look something like that. And here it would look something 
like that. So we have to look and see how much of our implant is in bone there. And then let's go ahead and draw out where our nerve is. Okay, and right now we see our two millimeter mark there. So one option I have is to go with a longer implant. So in this situation, I can then go to a 12 millimeter implant. And now we still have room from the nerve, as you can see right here. And we are starting to get more engagement in these areas as well. Now, <clears throat> one thing to also, uh, as a possibility here, not that I think that it's the choice uh, for us to do here, but uh, one option is also to tilt our implant like so, to engage into this interceptal bone, and then we can go ahead and center our implant so that we're not coming out of the mesial. Now, my concern with doing something like this is to take a look at what I try to do is take a look at the adjacent contacts, okay, and I try to figure out what type of uh, path of draw I would have. So actually this implant would probably, this implant placement right here would likely give us still good path of insertion for uh, good screw retain and good broad contacts there. Um, so something like this may actually work more in our favor with this particular implant. Uh, the other thing that I can see here is that I may also go ahead and do some sandpaper enamoplasty on this contact right here. Um, and now we have more than adequate, let me um, change this here, I'll have more than adequate running room to go ahead and build out a nice implant emergence profile uh, so uh, you know that that would look something something along that line right there and trying to you know create as broad of a contact as possible um, so I would be pretty confident uh, that this would work quite well for us and uh, so you know I'm the other option, the other choices is uh, also to consider undersizing our osteotomy to allow the implant threads uh, to, to do the engagement. Uh, if we're not comfortable with this particular implant, the great news is while keeping the position, we can just go in here and change to another type or size of implant. Uh, so in a case like this, I would possibly consider a 5.5 by 11 and a half millimeter Megagen any ridge implant. Uh, and that would look something like this. And, you know, this implant may give us a little more initial stability in a case like this. So I uh, just wanted to give everybody a kind of idea of what we look for. So I'm pretty confident that either the Megagen or the BioHorizons 5.8 by 12 would uh, give us more than adequate uh, stability uh, for this uh, delayed immediate placement. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And uh, if you're not using your technology for this type of uh, cases or need more education, certainly uh, we do provide that education through 3D Dentists. Uh, so we look forward to hearing from you and have a wonderful day.